Well, it's great to see everybody. I, I just saw our starting quarterback out in the hallway, and we were talking about 401k plans. So that was that was a lot of fun. Good to see him in, in passing out there. And uh, excited for him as he gets a chance to to put on his pads again and, and uh, go out there in williams Bryce in front of a great crowd on Saturday night, as we all are. I've said to you many times before just uh, how appreciative I am of this opportunity, and uh, it's just been a, a great experience so far. And, and uh, like any other starting point and any other project, which this certainly is and is, is going to be, there are great days with awesome highs where you come off the field and you really feel like you've accomplished some things and, and taken a clear step forward. And then there's some humbling times where you're reminded that it is a process and and um, th there are going to be some setbacks and uh, we haven't reached quite that critical mass yet. And, and for me, with special teams, because um, our reps tend to be a little bit more limited and there's not as many opportunities to repeat and, and every uh, meeting is has got to be concise and to the point and, uh, and move along. Um, it takes a little bit longer at times to get to that critical mass where you feel like um, 80 out of 110 people that are in your meetings every day are all on the same page and thinking the same way. So um, I, I, I realize that and uh, attack that in a, in a very positive fashion every day. Um, and uh, we have been been moving forward and, and uh, you know, kind of like the stock market, it's not just straight up, right? It kind of just ticks and there's ups and downs to it. So we've got to be be uh, excited about the rallies and uh, be ready to regroup when there's a little correction. Um, but that being said, uh, we're going to play Saturday night. Uh, and, and the key for us from a special team standpoint is to make sure that we're really prepared for all the uh, crazy things that can happen early in the season in college football. And, and um, you know, the goal is to go out there and look like this is not the first time that we've been out there together. Um, and if, if we can uh, play clean football from a special team standpoint, I like to tell the guys every day, don't beat yourself. If we can do that, then that'll be uh, a good step forward and, and a success in the first game. Hey, Pete, uh, Shane was saying that he didn't really have to worry too much about special teams because he had so many old guys in the room. What have you seen from that, and just how comfortable is it to come into a new place and know that you've got some veteran guys out there handling the chores? Oh, I thought you were referring to me as an old guy in the room. <laughs> there are days at 51 around here where you do feel like an old guy. Uh, Coach Atkins and I joke about that. He's got me by a few years, I think, but uh, – um, I, I thought you were referring to me, but uh, no, there, there are some veteran specialists uh, led by Parker, and he's been a real pleasure to work with this preseason. Uh, in the spring, while he was really going hard to finish up his MBA, we had some class conflicts, and, and we didn't get to spend as much time together on the field. Uh, but with preseason and, and him being available, 24 seven uh, while preseason was going on. Uh, we got to, to, to really develop that relationship and I've really enjoyed working with him. Uh, Kai Kroger, while he's not what I would consider a real veteran player yet, he handles himself like a veteran player. Uh, really, really enjoy my time with him and, and uh, his approach every day. And overall, the, the group of specialists is an excellent group of guys. Um, as I've said before, they're getting used to having um, a lot more hands-on coaching uh, from, from the minute they walk in the building until uh, you know, they turn off their phones at night or whenever I go to sleep, uh, which is earlier than them, of course. Um, and, and, and they're very much engaged with the entire practice. They're very much engaged with the rest of the special team. So when they're in those meetings, I expect them to be learning and, and becoming experts and, and to be guys that our other players can lean on because they understand what's going on. How close were the uh, competitions for the, for the kickoff and punt returners? And, and were they close enough to where you want to see both uh, – backups in, in in the game at some point see so get game action or are you going to ride with uh to carry on and, and josh 
No, that's a great, uh, great question. So <clears throat> I think it's really important that we continue to develop that entire group. And because you know over the course of the season, you're going to have to utilize different guys back there based on opponents, based on who's healthy, based on what guys are doing on offense and defense. And, and quite frankly, I'd like to see us continue to grow that group um, through the guys that are in our program already and uh, what we're going to do moving forward in the recruiting process because we need to make sure that we've got a, a healthy pool of those guys where there's good competition and, uh, and you're getting your, your very best guys out there on the field. Um, so there's a chance you'll see multiple returners uh, early in the season until we, we get into a groove and then even later in the season based on what we might be seeing from an opponent, um, you, you may see more or less um, you know, multiple guys in, in a particular game. Hey, Pete, I'm going to apologize in advance. This is a long question, but um, what do I'll you try to stay focused okay. for the entirety of it. <laughs> okay, what do you look for in a long snapper? How does Matthew Bailey fill that? What do you look for in a holder? How does Kai fill that? What do you look for in punt return gunners? And who's going to be doing that on Saturday? Sure. No, that's good. You, you, you're going down the entire roster. I love it. Well, uh, I would put reliability high on the list of, of values that we look for, characteristics that we look for in some of those positions and really across the board on special teams. Um, yes, you're looking for guys that can run and guys that can tackle on cover units and, and guys that can, can avoid blocks and, and guys that can take on blocks. Um, you're looking for guys that can protect uh, on punt. Um, a lot of those things go back to who is going to be reliable? Who's going to be consistent? Is the same guy going to show up every day? And especially when it comes to positions like long snapper and holder, uh, that reliability, that consistency uh, is really, really important. And so Matt will start at, at uh, both long and short snapper for us on Saturday night because he has been the most consistent, uh, the most accurate um, and, and we chart every single snap uh, with all of our guys uh, every day. Um, Hunter Rogers has also had a very good preseason, and he's a very good athlete. He certainly uh, gives us great competition, great depth at long snapper. He's also very, very good in coverage. You talk about gunners on punt. Um, it's not outside the realm that, that Hunter won't play for us as well this year because he, he does – uh, give you an added element with his athleticism and coverage. Um, but Matt has been very steady, and, um, and we've had a really good operation with him, which is where it all starts on punt and on field goal. Kai Kroger is a fantastic holder. And even going back to the spring, you had a sense that he was going to be that. Uh, I joke with him every day that uh, he's the second best holder in the country. Uh, because Preston Brady, my holder at Memphis, uh, uh, won the award for holder of the year and, and uh, was really a, a set a very high bar when it came to, to college football holders. So I like to keep Kai humble and, and challenge him. And, and he's got uh, big shoes to, to fill if he's going to overtake Preston in my heart as the, the, the best holder in college football. But, but Kai has been fantastic. And uh, our kickers have a great comfort level with him. I have a great comfort level with him. He understands the various situations that can come up on field goal. I would say our field goal unit, um, and, and maybe, uh, maybe I'll be proved wrong about this, but I would say our field goal unit has exceeded my expectations so far in terms of their maturity, their focus, how they've handled what we've thrown at them so far this year. Uh, handling situations, um, understanding the flow of the game, and so forth. So uh, I, I, I like those guys. Uh, as a former O-line coach, I, I look forward to my time working with the offensive linemen that are on that unit. So that's led by Kai, though. He's got to be the quarterback of that unit, and, uh, and he has taken that responsibility and handled it well. Uh, the last part of your question was referring to gunners on punt. And a, a good team can put out – uh, a number of guys at those spots. And that might be within the same game or that might be week to week 
based on how much guys are playing on offense and defense. So we uh, have played a lot of gunners this preseason. Uh, we also cross-train those guys in practice to be the corners on the punt return team because it's um, transferable skills and you want, you want to understand how the corner's playing when you're a gunner, right? And you want to understand how the gunner's playing when you're a corner. So Coach Stepp and Coach Gray helped me with those guys on, on those two units and uh, have done a nice job. So we have a mix of defensive backs, receivers, running backs that play gunner for us on punt, and there's a chance you'll see multiple guys in the game there on Saturday. Uh, it may have, may have been before we got here, but but at what point did you see Juju McDowell and you're like, we got something there, there that's a guy that we're going to want to have back deep on kick returns, punt returns, whatever? Sure. Well, when, when I accepted this position, uh, uh, those few days in between our, our bowl game at Memphis and then hopping in the car to, to drive here on New Year's Day, uh, my son AJ and I, sat down and, and opened up the huddle videos and, and watched the, the committed guys, the, the, the signees and so forth. And, uh, and Juju was one that, that stood out. Uh, as I recall, he had just played in a st you know, state playoff, state championship game. And I remember seeing some highlights of him returning kicks. Um, so you were very hopeful at that point that when he showed up on campus that you would see some of that. Um, and then coming out of spring, just knowing that we needed to continue to build uh, the depth and, and the talent in that group of returners, you're really hoping that when he showed up over the summer that he was mature enough and focused enough to be able to hopefully uh, contribute right away. Um, and, and he has been. He's been very solid. Um, today might have been one of those slight downtick kind of days for him, which is not unusual I have them too I'm not I'm not perfect every day I make mistakes every day and I'm not at my best that's what we're striving to be all of us um, so um, but he's been very good and, and very solid throughout preseason and he's earned a lot of trust uh, both as a running back and as a returner and uh, we we all feel very comfortable if, if he needs to play if, if the ball gets kicked to him or if he's in some kind of off returner role um, but every day for him is going to be valuable. Every day has to be, okay, I'm a freshman. I'm still learning this. There's things I haven't seen. There's situations that are going to ha happen that I need to be prepared for and comfortable with. Um, and, and so along with that, our expectations have to be somewhat reasonable too because he is still very much in the learning process. But he's been a pleasure to work with and uh, looking forward to seeing what he can do. Are there – four, five, six, seven, however many guys that, that you look at just across the board as like a core special teams guys? There are, and, and we're not quite at that critical mass yet. There are some guys that can potentially be that for us that have a ways to go before they're at that point where you'd say, yes, he gets it, he's reliable, we can plug him in here, we can plug him in there. Um, so it's a small core of guys that I would say, um, check that box right now. And, and my job is to grow that group over the course of the season. And some of this, quite frankly, is going to go into next spring and next preseason and next season. You know, I, it, I'm, I'm very uh, hopeful and, and positive about what we're going to do this season on special teams. But I also know that it takes sometimes two, three years before everybody's speaking the same language, everybody's thinking the same way, and, and that, that we're all completely on the same page. So, um, you know, I've got to, I've got to, you know, kind of temper my expectations a little bit at times too. Pete, is there a different time, goal times in terms of operation between points after touchdowns and true field goals? Oh, we treat them the same. We treat them the same. Um, one of the things that uh, people tend to be different with is how deep their spot is. It's anywhere from seven to seven and a half to eight based on the team, and that's going to affect their operation time on, on PATs and field goals. And the same thing on punt. The deeper your punter, you know, that may, may increase your operation time slightly. You know, in general, in college football, you would say on a field goal or a PAT under 1.3 or 1.25 is usually pretty good. Mm -hmm. 1.25 is, is usually 
you're, you're comfortable with that, if you can get it down to that point. Again, depending on where you're spotting the ball, it may um, increase or decrease that slightly. And then with punts, usually people use a 2.0 as a pretty good barometer there. Um, but again, certain punters are going to be a little bit faster, slower. You know, the snap time, the accuracy of the snap is all going to impact that. And I guess from a special team standpoint, how creative can you get schematically, whether that's on punt, return, punt, or, you know, kickoff, kickoff, return? It's a fine line that you walk every week. It's a very fine line because the number of practice reps you get is very limited. And so if you have too many options, too many different possibilities, you're just not going to be able to get them all practiced and you're not going to be able to practice them against the multitude of looks that you could potentially see in a game. Um, so it's, it's important that you've got sort of a core of, of schemes that uh, is your, your foundation and then you might tweak things a little bit week to week. Um, but I think it's really hard to walk in on a Tuesday or a Wednesday getting ready for Georgia and, and say, you know, we're, we just reinvented the wheel. Pete, um, at least on the depth chart, it had uh, Parker and Mitch as an or for handling yes. the kickoff. So what's the competition there? And if it does end up being Parker, do you worry about wearing him out if he's got to do both for the season? Absolutely. I think you just answered your own question, but you're, you're dead on it. Um, you have to play the best people, but uh, you, you certainly have to be aware of, of the ramifications of your PAT field goal guy also being your kickoff guy. And, and there are some guys that can do that and, and not blink. Um, Jack Fox, who's now the starting punter and, and kickoff guy at Detroit, who I had the pleasure of coaching for one year at Rice, he never seemed to get tired. You know, you, you, you had to back back off because he would just go out there and kick and punt all day if you let him. And there are other guys that are, are, are very cognizant of how their body feels and know they have a limit. And you have to have high levels of communication between coach and player to make sure that you're not surpassing that and, and putting them in harm's way so that they can be at their best on Saturday. Uh, so fortunately, uh, you have competition there. You also have some depth there. And, um, and hopefully those guys will, will continue to progress. And, and the guy we haven't mentioned yet, but Alex Herrera is a, is a really good, solid, steady combination kicker, punter, kickoff guy that I'm awfully glad we have him. He's a good athlete. Um, he works really hard. He's low maintenance. And, and when I use the word low maintenance, that's like an ultimate compliment. Uh, so very, very pleased with Alex's development as well. And uh, he's, he's our backup holder because, again, he's a really good athlete and he understands what we're doing. So um, he's another guy that at some point could, could factor into things. Pete, I think you mentioned, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, cross-training guys and keeping specialists involved. And I think we talked about it at Media Day. But where was that? When did that kind of start? Was that something you've done at previous stops? When did you kind of pick that up? Or, or is that something that's just started here? Or how, how did that kind of come about? I, I think it happened a little bit organically. Um, you get to situations in practice with different teams at different times where you may have a shortage of players at certain spots. And then you're thinking about your specialists and you're trying to keep them engaged and involved and, and not off on a separate field for two thirds of practice. Um, so th there's a lot of, of, of good ingredients coming together to, to make that happen. Uh, and our guys have, have done those jobs with a smile on their face. Uh, we, we like to joke in our room that we're all in customer service. And, uh, and there's some, some truth to that, that uh, you know, we all have to put the team and the program first and, um, and be willing to, to do some of the things that maybe you're not exactly in your job description to, to help the team get better. And uh, you know, I've said to you guys before that um, our culture, what we're trying to build here, is directly reflected by what we do on special teams. And I think when, when you have specialists who truly are specialists at what they do, but they are giving a tangible examples of putting the program first and doing whatever it takes to contribute in any way they can, I think that sends a really good message to the other 110 guys on the roster.
Steve's ready to kick me out of here. That's right. I, I may have solicited this question from Ben Briner, but uh, as far as like the specialized nature of punting with skying punts and forcing fair catches, how, how do you kind of value that versus a guy who just goes out there and punts it as far as he can? Yeah, well, uh, you, you know, you, you, there's only one good way to outkick your coverage, and that's with Jen Lembo, as far as I'm concerned, right? I definitely outkicked my coverage there. But otherwise, otherwise, you'd like to force fair catches if you can. And uh, so a, a punter that can put the ball in the desired location, a punter that can have uh, multiple style punts in his repertoire, um, and then being able to to have enough variety to what you do to keep people off balance, you know, those are all ways uh, to force those fair catches. And and um, so there there is there's a fine line there of of being able to just rip it, uh, but then potentially expose yourself to given that returner time and space to to get moving um, versus um, better hang time maybe a little bit less distance, uh, keeping the ball in a certain location where you've got them boxed in and, and um, hopefully walking away with a better net. So that, that's really the bottom line is what's the net. And, you know, going back to Jack Fox, you know, Jack could, could rip off some 55-yard punts for us at Rice. Maybe we weren't getting a fair catch. Maybe you were getting a 10-yard return, but you're still ended up with a 45-yard net. Um, if, if you can – hit them higher and shorter and, and walk away with a 40-plus net, there's nothing wrong with that either. All right, guys, really appreciate your time. We'll see you again soon. Thank you.